Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Night Stranger back on the channel today, and I really want to tackle an issue that I don't think we talk about enough, and that issue is privilege. You know, society is a really interesting thing, and how we interact around other people are also very interesting. You know, in a famous playwright, Czech playwright Vlaslav Havel, he wrote in his essay The Power of the Powerless um, about communism, and he explained how the whole idea of communism works. He parallels our lives to that of a greengrocer, so this guy who sells vegetables, right? So this guy who sells vegetables hung this sign in front of his shop door that says, workers of the world unite, which basically is a communist slogan back in communist Czechoslovakia back in the 1970s, right? So this is kind of a thing that um, demonstrates this greengrocer's appreciation and loyalty towards the cause of communism. And Havel talks about the reasons why this greengrocer hangs this sign in front of the shop window. It's not because he consciously does such a thing. He hung this sign in front of his shop window was because probably in that morning when he was buying the groceries for his grocery shop, he saw another shop have the sign, Workers of the World Unite, hung on the display of their shop. Then yesterday he may have seen another shop hung that sign. And two days ago, he might have met a person who told him about the slogan. So it's the idea of social norms that constrain us in society. You know, he doesn't hang that sign on his shop window consciously. He does it so he doesn't seem like he's the odd one out. You know, that's how a regime like communism works. It's because you don't want to be the odd one out, because you don't want to be singled out by the government, because you're not hanging that sign outside your window. So something like this, such a small thing becomes the status quo. And by not doing such a thing, you could be perceived as someone who is, you know, who's doing something wrong in society. So if the communist government rolls up to your door and say, say, hey, why didn't you hang this sign up? You know, it becomes a norm. So why did I tell you all of this? It's because our society is, in my opinion, very, very similar to this communist ideology that was rampant back in the 1970s, 1980s. Because of one thing. Because of privilege. Society has gotten a lot better since the 1970s and 80s. You know, birth rates, death rates. They're a lot higher, right? People's economy, let's say, people, the, the, the GDP of countries, the, the annual income of people, you know, the living standards of each individual. Most of us have gotten wealthier. Most of us are living better lives than we are, we would have in the 1970s. However, one thing comes with it. Privilege comes with it. And in modern society, we try to disguise our privilege. One of the most common things that I feel like happens in life is, for example, my friends and I would go to a cafe and we would look at the menu and the first thing that people say is that, oh, I can't pay for that. Oh, I can't afford that. Oh, I don't have enough money. You know, there's such a stigma or such a social norm around pretending, or not just pretending, potentially it's actually the case that you do not have the money, right? But presumably, if you're going out with friends for once a week towards this cafe shop, you would not not bring money, you know? It's a kind of ideology that is so ingrained in our brains that we need to try to display to other people that we are not wealthy, or we need to display to other people that we are not privileged at all, you know? And for me, this is a huge problem. For, for, for me, I don't think you need to display, oh, I have a bunch of money. Or not just a bunch of money, but at least you could afford the food that you're buying. You don't have to always tell yourself that, oh, that costs too much. Oh, that costs too much. In a sense, for me, it's everyone downplays the word privilege. 
I, 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 I am quite certain that in old English, the word privilege would mean something positive. It would mean someone who has decent wealth, a person who had decent status, a person who has a good role in society. However, in 2024, the word privilege connotes to something very negative. It connotes the idea that, oh, I'm just a posh individual. I'm this guy who cares nothing about the people around me. You know, I'm this person who does not belong to society. Exactly how, how, why the greengrocer hangs that sign in front of his window. Workers of the world unite. Just like him, today we say, um, I can't pay for that. I can't afford that, you know. And people don't realize the benefits of privilege. One of the most interesting and one of the most genuinely influential for myself experiences I ever had was going to South Africa. You know, I would like to say that I'm quite a privileged individual, you know, that the fact that I have the ability to travel to some places, whereas many people do not have the ability, you know, I'm very grateful for. Um, and during this trip to South Africa, my friends and I met with this choir of South African children, right? So imagine we're in this very rural place and we sat down in quite a nice restaurant, right? And we were supposed to meet the choir of South African children. However, the reason why they were not dining with us for lunch was because they would have not ate the food, brought, brought it back for the people they care for while we would have been eating. You know, that's one thing that you don't realise about privilege. Maybe that's where the negativity around privilege comes from, that you do not understand the lives of other people. We were told that they have no money, no home, no family, that they were orphans on the streets. But once we met them, they sang a song to us, right? Then it was like amazing, right? It was like ethereal, it was like, you know, that kind of angelic voice that they had. And we were told that it was South African tradition to sing like a song back. So we sang a song back. But one of the most beautiful things that happened within that exchange was the fact that in South Africa, these South African children, mainly they were colored or black people. They never in their lives had the opportunity to interact with people who are white, who are Asian, who are light skinned. And this opportunity showed them the world. What we didn't realize is that our privilege of being in South Africa at that day, at that time, in that moment, exchanging our culture with them, gave them an opportunity to realize that, oh, I am not inferior to white people. I'm not inferior to light-skinned people. There is an opportunity for us to form a bond, to form a friendship. Because in South Africa, there was this historical regime called the apartheid, which run rampant back in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, right? It ended in 1994 by Nelson Mandela. So apartheid is the idea that white and black people should be segregated. So most black kids, even right now in South Africa, grow up with the ideology and the idea that, oh, I'm beneath white people. So us being there and showing them our culture was so influential on them. And this was one of the things that I realized I could do with privilege. I can give other people the opportunity to destroy their beliefs from when they were younger. Because that's one of the most beautiful things that you can see. And it was such a, it was such a heartwarming experience because the reason why we went there was because we raised a lot of money in school, right? So we raised monies from like movie nights, from like this and that, you know, from, from charity bake sales. And we brought all this money to them because we want to do a good cause. That's why we were in South Africa. We were volunteering, right? And we managed to give these children their first experience to go to a, to a big city called Cape Town and perform in their first ever concert. This choir of children who had no opportunities before. This is what I realized. If I was ashamed about my privilege, I would have never went to South Africa and volunteered. I would have never held out a helping hand towards people who are genuinely in need because I would feel like, you know, they wouldn't feel like I'm genuinely helping them. They would feel like, oh, I'm pitying them, I'm this, I'm that. No. 
I don't think that is the case. I find so much joy in volunteering because I know that in this world, I am so glad that I have the capacity to, to help other people, to change the lives of other people because I am privileged. You know, I think it's as simple as that. If I saw it as shame, I would have never held this helping hand out. That's what I feel like is missing in this world. People admitting that they're privileged, but also admitting the fact that, hey, because I'm privileged, I'm going to fucking change the world. <laughs> There's not enough people who realize the power of privilege. There's too many people in the world who realize the negativity that is surrounding privilege, the societal pressure that's surrounding privilege, the idea that, oh, I can't afford this, I can't afford that type of privilege. And I feel like, and I feel like having the ability to do such a thing, being capable of helping other people is such a genuinely nice thing that we should not play down privilege. Privilege is a wonderful thing because it allows you to change the lives of other people. I think God is fair. God gave you this life because you can help out others. You know, a famous saying in the Jesuit tradition is that men and women for others. Because we are born in such a privileged situation, because the fact that we actually have the ability to volunteer, we have the ability to take side, take time out of our lives, to, to, to donate some of our earnings, to be what genuine need, I think that is so, so important. I think that's how we should view privilege. I think it's such a backwards thing if we're just viewing privilege as something very negative. Because sure, there are people who embody negative privilege. There are people who hold their noses up and, you know, are snobby and be like, yo, I don't want to interact with people who are, you know, economically poorer than me. People who are, you know, who might not have the same job, the same opportunities as them. But I feel like the majority of people who are privileged want to help others. The majority of the people who are privileged want to see others have the same opportunities as them. And I think we need to show that more as a society. But yeah, I was getting excited. <laughs> but I think that's a really, really crucial thing about privilege that we need to understand today and we need to implement into our lives. Each and every one of you guys, you have electronics. You can watch YouTube videos. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, be the change that you want to see in the world. Be that change. That's my message for you today. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.